Today we are going to talk about programming the Crawlmaster V3 and why you probably don't even need to program it. But in case you need to change some other AM32 products, this will help you out. All right, so to start with, you will need to go to our website, homeshobbies.com, and go to the Crawlmaster V3 product. At the very bottom of the page is a link to the folder that has all the programmers, the drivers, and updated firmwares that you may need for this. You really won't need to change any settings on the Crawlmaster V3. However, if you want to, this is what you're going to do. So, here we have the multi ESC config tool. Before you plug in your programming, you need to make sure that you install the driver. But once you install the driver, you will be ready to go. The multi ESC config tool, the running file is going to be at the bottom of the folder. It's an exe file and you just open that up. I'd love to show you on the computer. However, it doesn't want to record the file explorer for some reason. So what we're going to do is show you after it's already installed. So we're going to plug in our programmer right here. And once you do that, you can select the port. I know this one's on COM5. On most computers, it's only going to show one COM, uh, whether it be one, two, three, four, or five. However, this one's got a few peripheral devices potentially. So I'm going to select COM5 and also the direct connect button here. We're going to hit connect. Boom, it connected right there to COM5. So if you don't hit the direct connect, you'll get more choices on this M. So there'll be M1, 2, 3, and 4, which is for quadcopter. However, we're only doing this for a single ESC for a crawler. So you can either hit the direct connect and you only get this choice of M1, or you can just hit the M1 button. Either way, it's gonna work. Now that we are connected to this serial device, we wanna boot up our ESC. There you go. You can use a two through four S LiPo. It'll boot right up. And we hit that M1 button. Connecting, 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 connected. And it reads all of your settings at the same time. So let's run down these settings and talk about what they do and why you don't want to change them if you're rock crawling. Reverse rotation, you know, on a brushless motor, you can just swap two wires and you get reverse rotation. But let's say everything is installed or you hard solder it, you can use this to reverse your rotation in software. Complementary PWM and variable PWM are used for really smooth throttle response no matter what the speed of the motor is. I would recommend that you just keep these as is. Uh, but if you want to play around with them, you can. However, I will let you know that it's not going to be any smoother. It's going to be less smooth. Bidirectional is when you have an ESE that will go forwards and reverse. And in this case, this also gives you an arming that's in the very center for ground use. If you wanted to use this for UAV, you uncheck the bi-directional or, or maybe for like an airplane or something like that. You would uncheck this bi-directional box right there and then you would have normal single direction rotation. But this is for a crawler so we want to keep the bi-directional. Stuck rotor protection is for more UAV use. Let's say you have the throttle on and you crash or you lose signal and you crash and the motor prop got stuck you want a protection on there so it just doesn't fry the ESC. However, in a crawler, you're crawling all the time in a near stall position. So if you have this checked, it's just going to give up the ghost a lot of times. In a crawler, you don't want the stuck rotor protection. So don't check this. The next thing is brake on stop. This is your drag brake when you're stopped. If you're in a crawler, you want brake on stop. If you're not in a crawler, then maybe you don't want it. Let's say you are in an airplane and you want your prop to free spin. When you let go of the throttle, then that's what you would want to do. However, we're in a crawler, so we want to break on stop. Stall protection is a little bit of an RPM lock at low RPMs. So when you get up to an obstacle and you start to load down your tires, the stall protection will actually keep the tires rotating. It's very similar to a velocity loop or an RPM loop on FOC. However, it's not quite operating the same and it also has a little bit more sponginess to it. So it gets to a point to where you load down, it will actually stall, but we have some built-in stall protection on here if you want it. Most people love the way that it drives, so it is enabled. Sinusoidal startup is how we start up the motor slower than it inherently wants to. So there are minimum speeds in a typical six-step controller, like let's say a casual Castle Creations or a Tekken is only going to be able to start up the motor so slow. 
With a signed startup here, we essentially force it to start up at a lower RPM than what the back EMF would allow on the motor. So for crawling, you definitely want that. It's really nice. However, if you don't want any of the extra heat that's involved with that, you can uncheck that and then start tuning your ESC to see how good you get it. However, most crawlers, they like that signed startup. They usually crawl a lot in the sign range. Telemetry and hall sensors, we don't have the features on this, so you really don't want to check them. It's probably not going to cause any problems if you did by accident. However, you're not using it, so I don't recommend you do. Timing advance. We have this set at a very neutral 15 degrees of timing advance. If you find yourself running at wide open throttle a lot, you can try to adjust this to see if you can reduce your heat a little bit. Um, if you increase your timing advance, it will increase the motor RPMs, but also the heat. And since we're not like drag racing or something like that, I don't recommend that you increase that. So 15 is a really good setting. If you want to play around with it, you certainly can. However, probably not needed. The motor KV and the motor poles, we have this set up for 2,214 poles. There really is no need to change this. What this affects in software doesn't actually affect anything that's concerned with smoothness or startup or anything that you would need to worry about. This is more for protections on a UAV. Um, so I'm really not going to get into that. But if you want to play around with it, you can, but you're not going to find that it does anything of value for a crawling situation. If you do find that you're having issues with it not wanting to spool up all the way for some reason, then maybe you start pushing your KV down on there. But there's really no use case that I would see that I have been able to test and duplicate that you need to change those. So just so you're aware, Changing those in software, you know, us programming these before you buy them to be exactly what you bought, it's not going to matter. It really is not going to matter unless we go outside the 1,000 to 3,000 kV range. And in that case, yeah, maybe sure. But if you're crawling, you're probably not going to do that, at least not with this sort of setup, a sensorless setup. Startup power. The startup power is what defines the transition from signed startup to regular six step back EMF. If you want to have less heat on the system so you don't want to spend as much time in the sign mode then you would reduce this however this can cause sync problems if you go below the back emf of the motor because all motors have a minimum speed where they produce back emf so you're kind of limited in that regards the 100 works extremely well for this software it has a very smooth transition it's hardly detectable so i would recommend that you really don't change this but if you do then play around with it see what you think however you probably not need to change it on this hardware uh, pwm frequency is locked on this particular controller so you can't change it your beep volume is really just how loud is this thing on startup when it gives you the arming tones if you're using an in runner it's going to be really quiet you can't really hear it so maybe you want to increase that beep volume so that you can hear it arm however outrunners are pretty loud typically and you don't need to have a lot of beep volume to be heard so we have it set at five it's plenty loud it works just great the stopped brake level this is your drag brake when you're not rolling anywhere so whenever you're sitting at neutral in a crawler you want maximum so we have it set at 10. if you don't want maximum you can always lower that back down and it is what it is the sign startup range this is how much of your throttle is the sign startup so if you want more sensitivity down low and you want to spend more time in sign which does create heat then you would increase this number if you want to have a slightly more touchy throttle and make sure that you get out of that sign range as quickly as possible you know maybe get a little bit of rpms under you then you want to lower this 15 in my opinion is a really good range i like the way that it feels i like the trigger of it so i set it at 15. sign mode power this is how much power or duty cycle that the controller gives to the motor during the sign startup range if you have a motor that is let's say a really low kv or something with a really weak back emf and it's losing sync then you can actually increase this although it will increase heat in your system um, five is a really good setting all the way around especially for motors in my catalog so we have it set at five six may cause you some heat issues and four may cause some sync issues so if you do find yourself having a little bit of cogging issues when you're starting up, then you can always increase that. However, I would say in most cases, you probably just need to add more gearing to the vehicle. So smaller pinion, bigger spur, and that'll get rid of it without increasing the heat on the system. So just as a heads up, you can increase this. I really don't recommend it. 
The last thing here is the running brake level. This is a throttle matching drag brake. So if I'm at 100% throttle and I drop down to 50% throttle, the running brake level will bring that RPM right back down for me. And the stronger you have this setting, the stronger that it is. So if you want something to more free coast, you would put it at zero. If you want it to throttle match what you're telling it to do, then you put it at 10. In a crawler, since we're going relatively slow and I want that downhill control to where if I slow down and I'm going downhill, I want it to slow down and not just continue free coasting. I have it set at maximum. If you need to change the firmware on your device, the second tab here is the one that you will do it with. You hit that load firmware button. Once you select your new firmware, you will have a second button that pops up that you jam it on with, and then you'll be all good. We also have the send default settings. However, on this particular program, it's gonna be UAV defaults. You don't want that, so don't do that. All right, input. This is the throttle, the throttle signal. So a normal throttle is gonna go from one millisecond to two milliseconds, and our neutral is gonna be right in the middle at 1.5 milliseconds. And as you can see, that's pretty much what we have right here. Your servo dead band is how much dead band you have in the middle for arming. And in this particular case, we have it set at 50. I've had absolutely no problems with any radios. If you have something like a Futaba, you may still need to reverse your Futaba so that it'll arm properly. So just be aware of that. If you do increase your servo dead band for arming purposes, you will lose some throttle resolution to do that. Uh, so just be careful with that. In most cases, we really don't need to change that. Low voltage cutoff. This is in volts in the decimal place is not listed. So this would be equivalent to 3.3 volts cutoff. We have the stock at three volts on our first batch. I think I'm going to bump that up to 3.3 just for a little bit more protection from y'all. Um, but we can, let's, let's put this back down. I'll show you how to save settings and then we can check that it is saved. So I'm going to bring that back down close to three volts to sell. Temperature limit and current amp limits. I believe that these are pretty important for protecting and I have this set at 81 Celsius and 64 amps on this particular unit. If you're competing, then maybe you don't want these. You want to be able to get to the end without having an oopsie in there. If you're not competing, however, these protections are pretty important. So I recommend that you don't change them unless you're competing. And if you're competing, you can bump them up or you can turn them off. If you go all the way to the top, it disables them as you can see there. Uh, I'll bring them back down. Mm, we'll put it, uh, there we go, 62, 64. We're, we're close. Let's see, can I do it? There we go. There we go. All right. And the last thing on here, car or basher double tap brake. You can hit that if you wanted to. If this is a crawler, you don't want double tap reverse. So there we go. Now, you save the settings. You can do it on any of these screens. I'm on the last screen, so I'm going to do it here. You hit save settings and watch at the top of the screen here. Write EEPROM successful. That's what tells us that it worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this voltage cutoff back up to here, and then I'm going to read the settings again by hitting this M1 button. And let's watch. Boop. It went back down. That tells us that these settings were indeed saved. So I'm going to bump this one back up actually to 3.3. There we go. I'm going to save those settings for myself because this is going to be my controller. And there we go. We are ready to go. So I hope that helps you out on the programming. Really, there is nothing that needs to be changed on these. However, if you do want to start tweaking, you certainly can. The program is included on this V3. However, I should say that the programmer is not compatible with the V2 and the V1, unfortunately, because it uses a slightly non-standard 5-volt signal instead of the regular serial 3.3-volt signal. We are working to change that. I definitely want them all to be compatible with the same programmers. However, since it's open source, there has been a little bit of non-standard components made out there, so slightly unfortunate, but we will be working on that. If you do have any questions about programming, any AM32 product will work with this, so leave your questions below and we will get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.